How's everybody doing tonight? We have got two breaks this evening. One is a fast break. That's our Gold Rush full-size football helmet. The other one is kind of a long break, and that's our 2018 score football because it's got lots and lots of cards in it. Um, all right, let me get the iPad uh, set up here so I can see chat, and we'll get rolling. First up, I want to say thank you to everyone. I appreciate everyone who bids and breaks with me, who chats with me. Uh, sometimes people come by and hang out just to say hi. So thank you to everybody in whatever way you participate. I'm glad to have you. And secondly, my feedback is completely automated on eBay. What that means to you is you never have to wait on me. As soon as you leave positive feedback for me, you should instantly get it in return. Thanks to the miracle of automation. Next up, we're going to take a quick spin through here of the auctions that are coming up over the next five days. I list new stuff most nights. It does usually run for a five-day period. And so tomorrow night, we're looking at uh, a lot of baseball, all kinds of baseball, uh, including some more Bowman and another case of the Onyx Preferred Players Autograph Baseballs, which if you haven't looked at the checklist for that, you should because it's awesome. And the triple play box, that's tomorrow night too. That has an autographed baseball jersey, an autographed baseball, and an autographed picture in it. And Otani is part of the series. Yeah, so it's possible to pull an autographed Otani jersey out of there. Wednesday night, we've got some one box breaks, including a mini helmet. And then we'll do the rest of the score. So the remaining score that we don't do tonight, we'll do Wednesday Thursday, uh, we're going to do some more of those autographed baseballs and some more Bowman baseball. Friday, we'll do a jersey, some 2011 prime signatures and a half case break and a full case of National Treasures basketball, which comes out on Friday night. We're going to start breaking it on Friday night. Saturday, we'll do another Gold Rush helmet like we're going to do tonight. Some more autographed baseballs, another triple play box, and some more Bowman. So that's what the days ahead look like. Tonight, as I said, we've just got the two things, the Gold Rush football helmet, which that is a completely free shipping break. Anytime you have a break with me that is completely free shipping, it's going to go out either six or seven days after the auction ends on average. So I am anticipating this to go out on Monday the 7th because, of course, we can't ship on Sunday. Post office is closed. And our paid shipping break tonight, that's score football. I'm guessing that that is a Friday ship date. I'll try very hard to get that out sooner but it is a long, heavy sort, and especially because, you know, you got to go through and match up all these rookies to their teams. So Friday is my estimate. If something goes great this week, it could possibly get out a day earlier. If something goes terrible, it could slide a day later, but most likely Friday. Oh, one other quick thing. If your team is not pulled in a break, which is possible in the helmet break, everybody's going to get cards in the score break, uh, you are still entitled to a consolation trading card for your team, it can be from any year, any series. It will typically ship with your next package, your next hit, whatever you pull next. It can go out sooner by itself. If you would like to have that happen, just shoot me a message on eBay and let me know. So first up, 2018 Gold Rush full-size autograph football helmet. This is break number six. Everything we're opening tonight ended tonight on eBay the 30th of April, the last day of the month. And we're live streaming it tonight, Monday, April 30th. Of course, you see the team names there on the left. Winning bidders are across from it on the right-hand side. This spreadsheet will go up again in a minute for a score. So if you're part of the score break, you'll see that one in a minute. One other thing to point out here, there are two individual bidding categories. One is a college greats multi-signed helmet. The other is a Heisman Trophy winners multi-signed helmet. If we pull either one of those, of course, it would go to its respective bidding position. Frankly, that's because there are so many signatures on that thing. Like, if you guys uh, haven't seen it, look at the sales materials that I have as pictures on the listing. You'll see what I'm talking about. It would be a nightmare to try to figure out all those signatures and then try to determine what team it goes to. So that's why they are their own bidding spots. And right now you notice that the background went out of focus a little bit. Not to worry, that is on purpose. We should still be able to see everything without any problems. And in chat tonight, we have, uh, I always just call you Little, because I don't know what the, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce your, 
your username. So I'm going to call you Lily and say hi to you <laughs> and hi to James Scheisler. And Ryan is here so that I get to say Superfly tonight. <laughs> I like it. Oh, you say it Loosh. Okay. So it's a little Loosh. You guys know I'm terrible with the name pronunciation. So thank you for helping me out with that because you know I would have uh, never gotten that right. <laughs> Let's just face it. I would not have. So tonight we have a packer and I have a little bit of an advantage in that there is a sticker on the top of that box that tells me who the signature is. And I'm going to tell you who it is here in just a hot second. I'm trying to get everything out of the bag. All right, so our signature tonight is Devontae Adams for the Green Bay Packers. I would never in a million years been able to read that and say that it was Devontae Adams, but yet, there you go. That's what it says. And it looks like there's kind of a, a weird sort of, I don't know, it's kind of a weird paint job with this thing. You see that? It's almost like there's glitter or something. It's That's not just a glare from the camera. You can actually feel that, too. There's some kind of a coarse glitter type material underneath the paint on this whole helmet. So I guess it's, whatever it is, I guess it's intentional. But anyway, there you have it. JSA authentication sticker on the back. A matching JSA authentication card to go along with it. So Green Bay Packers taking our full-size helmet in our break tonight. All right, guys, that was quick and easy. I told you the, those helmets, man, they go fast. Score football, that's not going to go as fast. Let me get our helmet put away over here. And then get our spreadsheet put back up. And we're going to be busy with some score. So probably everybody just saw this because, well, I guess somebody still could have come in late. But if you didn't, there it is. Your anticipated shipping date for score football break is Friday. If I can get it to you sooner, I will. If something goes wonky, it could possibly slide to Saturday. But I think Friday is pretty likely. So this is going to be four boxes, which again is a third of a case, but it is also 1,600 cards. <laughs> so a third of a case has more cards than most full cases have in it. And of course, this is break number two. We broke the first part of this on Friday night and break number two tonight, Monday night, the 30th. And we'll do break number three on Wednesday night. Same format as before, you'll see your eBay username across from your teams. There is a spot here for undrafted rookies. And let's clarify this. I mean, it says this already kind of in the listing. Not kind of, it does already say this in the listing, but I want to clarify it anyway. And that is if someone went undrafted and they have, in the meantime, signed, you know, a rookie camp deal or free agent deal or whatever, that is doesn't matter for the purposes of this break. For the purposes of this break, if they were not drafted in that initial seven round, three day draft, they will go into that undrafted rookies category. Because that is the way, you know, we started this when the, when the draft was still taking place and that's the way it was set up and that's how it's stated in the auction description. So that's how we're going to roll with it. All right, guys, so you saw that I have eight boxes here. These are the eight remaining boxes. I just numbered them on the opposite end that we numbered them on the last time. That is because we're going to roll over here to random.org and let random choose which four boxes we open tonight versus which four will be opened on Wednesday night to finish up this case. I'm just going to hit random one time. First four numbers that come up will be our our boxes for this evening. It gives us seven, four, one, and eight. So one, four, seven, and eight is what we're opening up tonight. All right, so let me get, there's one, four, and there are seven and eight conveniently already stacked together. 
Let me get these other four out of the way, and then we'll get busting on that. Of course, we are not far from Majestic Football coming out. I think it's not, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, I think. So... We are going to have 2018 football pretty much from now on. <laughs> from now through the rest of the year. They're not going to take too much time off. They never do. They just kind of throw releases out there. I think it's a little slower the early part of the season. Like maybe we get one every two or three weeks for football. And then, of course, the closer we get to season, then we start getting them like once a week and crazy stuff like that. So 10 packs, 40 cards per pack, and we are looking for, oh my gosh, I have forgotten, is it three, is it three autographs per box in here? Does it even tell us? Four autographs per box. Okay, so we'll find four autographs in total. Obviously, that is less than one per pack, but hopefully they're going to be good ones worth the wait. As you see, I kind of buzz through the base because there's a tremendous amount of it with 1,600 cards. So if you do want me to adjust the pace on any of that, you need some of that to go by slower or something, jump in, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I kind of keep on keeping on. Ryan, Majestic, no. Majestic is way more than that. It's just not as much as it was last year. Uh, last year, Majestic was, what, like $375 a box or something. And this year it's 200 and something a box. Um, but no, I, gosh, I don't know if we have anything in the 60 to $80 range per box besides uh, score, which is just under, uh, well, it's about 80. I think they've raised the price now, but it came out at close to 80. And then we have um, classics which will come out in a few weeks. Classics is, again, in the, maybe a $60 to $70 price point, and everything else will be $100 plus uh, per box, but stuff like Majestic, yeah, that's up over $200. That is numbered to $35, Case Keenum and the Vikings. Jeff, the helmet was a Packer, a Green Bay Packer. And, of course, all of our rookies here, as you know, are going to go to their teams that drafted them. And if by chance they were not drafted over the course of the seven-round, three-day draft, then they're going to fall once again into that undrafted rookie category. Yeah, Majestic was never, uh, Majestic was never that price. I mean, it, it was... It was a very expensive box when it came out, and I, I would have to go back and look to tell you for certain. But it was a five-box case. Maybe it was two. Maybe it was closer to three hundred a box because it was a five-box case, and it was a little under sixteen hundred, I think, right around sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred, something like that. So whatever that is, divided by five is how much it was. So I originally said 375, maybe it was a little less or so, I don't know. It was a lot anyway. It is less this year. It's down to 200 and something, I think, a box, 250 maybe. Heinz is our signature hit and, do I, let's see. I don't remember who drafted him, but I can tell you, because I wrote it down, the Colts. So that is an autograph hit for the Colts with the Hines that just went by there. Yeah, so I would say, Ryan, for most of that kind of stuff, you know, just because the boxes are that expensive doesn't mean the break will be super expensive, depending, of course, as it always does, on the team that you're interested in. But I mean, that's the reason we like to do breaks, right? Because then you don't, you can get some high dollar, high end cards without having to shoulder the price of paying those hefty per box prices yourself. 
they did i think at some point panini never marked it down but some of the wholesalers and distributors and things at some point i believe started marking majestic down because they had some of it left and i guess they just didn't want to keep carrying the inventory so i think at some point it did get marked down to 200 and something uh like 225 or something like that but but either way not an inexpensive uh proposition for majestic but classics classics is definitely um a more affordable one if you if you want to buy some boxes yourself for instance you know classics you're probably looking at maybe 65 a box something like that 65 70 somewhere in that neighborhood and as I said, I think they've marked up the price of score. It was maybe originally um, around an $80 price point or in that neighborhood. Is that a... Yeah, I need to set our rookie aside there. They threw me off mixing rookies in with veterans. There was a Panini Rewards Point card that you uh, saw fly by there a second ago. We're going to take a closer look at that right now that has replaced one of our hits so that means we are going to be short an autograph hit in this box because it has been replaced by this 600 points rewards card so i'm going to set that aside and we will distribute that using random.org at the end of the break you're looking for a little carry on johnson huh okay well maybe we will get lucky enough to find that for you tonight that would be uh, a nice hit you know whose draft class i like this year the ravens i know right like when is the last time you looked at a ravens draft class and said oh yeah that looks good but it does i think they really did a, a nice job this year up there in baltimore so i think their draft class can be quite good leighton vanderesh for, I believe the Dallas Cowboys, if I am recalling that correctly. I believe he went to Dallas. A lot of places had him mocked going to the Steelers, but he was off the board by the time they got to us. You pulled a 2015 Topps Triple Threads Blake Border Blake Border Woo Blake Bortles <laughs> TJ Yeldon Auto Patch Booklet recently. Oh, cool, man! That's excellent. I haven't opened any Triple Threads in a while. I might still have some 2013 Triple Threads hanging out around here. I possibly do i'm not sure i don't think i have any 15 i had some 14 recently but i think that's all gone too i have to look through my to look through my stuff and see if i've got any triple threads now that you mention it that's always a fun one to open and this is numbered to 20 for the falcons with don terry poe don tari The draft was pretty interesting. I, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think some of these second tier quarterbacks are going to be interesting to watch. Kyle Laletta being one of them, having gone to the Giants. And of course, you know, how much longer is Eli going to be there? Gosh, he's like 150. <laughs> he's been there for what seems like a thousand years and Okay, we're just going to leave some of these upside down because I'm flipping the cards back and forth a million times every single time. And there's just that's just extra unnecessary handling, in my opinion. If you want them all flipped, you let me know and I will. But otherwise, we're just going to look at some of them upside down because that's frustrating and unnecessary handling. Reuben Foster, numbered to 50 for the San Francisco 49ers, at least for now. If he didn't get let go because of his little, uh, his little 
extracurricular activities of late. So we'll see how that works out with him. But I think Kyle Lawletta might be interesting. I think Mason Rudolph for my Pittsburgh Steelers could be interesting. And maybe even Luke Falk. I mean, I think some of the secondary, some of the secondary, uh, or second tier, however you want to consider them, not not part of the big five, if you will, quarterbacks. I think some of them may be interesting. I am not opposed to particularly trying to pick up a little Laletta, but of course the problem is going to be you've got uh, Saquon Barkley there too, so not going to be able to pick up the Giants inexpensively anyway because of uh, Saquon Barkley. Maybe it'll be a twofer. Dion Kane, which I believe is the Colts. And again, as I speculate who some of these are, guys, if I am wrong about some of those, obviously I'm going to send them to the correct team that drafted the player. I'm just kind of uh, speculating, trying to remember where I think they go as we go through these. Sam, hi, Sam. We have not hit Josh Allen yet and we have not hit any Bill's signature cards anyway. We had three signatures in this box and one 600 point Panini rewards point card. We didn't have uh, our fourth signature. It got co-opted and replaced by that Panini rewards point card. Uh, no, Brian, all the autographs are not rookies. We pulled uh, Eddie Lacy on a Packers card, believe it or not. We pulled an Eddie Lacy and we pulled somebody for the 49ers. I can't remember who. Somebody nice for the 49ers out of the first time. There is a Josh Allen numbered to 10. How about that? Ask and ye shall receive, right? Um, does anybody remember who the 49er was that we pulled out of the first part of this? It was a it was a pretty good one. I mean, it was a retired 49er, like a Hall of Famer type guy. But I just can't pull out of my head who it was. Sorry. Yeah, I, your Chiefs, maybe I wasn't. I'll, I'll agree. I wasn't totally uh, over the moon about the Chiefs draft class. But then again, I'm not over the moon about uh, the Steelers draft class this year either. I loved our class last year. I'm very lukewarm about it this year, with the exception, really, of James Washington, who I do think is likely to be productive. At least I certainly hope so. But he looks pretty good on film when you just size him up, I think. It's always good to have another option besides uh, Juju and Antonio. You know, split the defenses up, keep them guessing kind of thing. All right, box number two, 400 more cards coming your way. We'll also have some more leaf coming up. I think it's Ultimate Draft that comes up next, and it is not for maybe another... 10 days or two weeks, something like that, before we get to Leaf Ultimate Draft. And shortly behind that, we'll have a Valiant Draft, which, well, A, you know I like the Leaf stuff, but B, I really like the Valiant because it always has a graded card that is 9.5 or higher, which is pretty sweet. 220, Darius Slay for the Lions. Well, yeah, I mean, that is, um, that's true, what you're saying there, Brian, about once uh, Ben retires, about Mason Rudolph and Washington, because, of course, they were teammates. So they, they will have a nice, my Steelers will have a nice little duo there that are already very familiar with each other. 
See, I don't know about Edmonds. Little Luce, you're talking about, he's talking about Terrell Edmonds, not Tremaine Edmonds, his brother Terrell, which I think most people probably had pegged maybe third round or something, and we took him as our first round pick. But we don't really need another safety particularly because we picked up uh, the guy from the Packers, and then we have a couple of safeties on the roster already. If they, you know, I think Terrell Edmonds has a little bit of ability to switch things up. And there's, I think, a little murmur that maybe he'll slide into inside linebacker. Since Ryan is obviously not playing in 2018, or maybe not for us again, but definitely not in the upcoming season. So maybe if they got him for that purpose, if they're, I mean, they announced him as safety. But if they're planning to slide him to inside linebacker, I'd be a little more excited about Terrell Edmonds, I think, than I am Terrell Edmonds' safety. So, I don't know. That's just my thought on it. Josh Adams. And Josh Adams, I don't remember. Let's see if I've got that written down over here. I believe, okay, so Josh Adams was undrafted. That's why I don't remember where he went. He didn't go anywhere. So that goes to our undrafted category. Now, once again, I do realize that some of these guys may have signed mini camp deals, training camp deals, free agent deals, etc. since the draft ended. But for the purposes of this particular break, if they didn't hear their name called in the official seven-round draft, they're going into that undrafted category. Well, yeah, Marcus Allen is good. I'm, I'm not going to dispute Marcus Allen. I just would like to have seen, well, honestly, I would like to have seen another really strong running back candidate because, I mean, come on, we know we're not going to be keeping Le'Veon Bell. We haven't been able to do a deal with him in two years. We're not going to be keeping him. I mean, we'll have him for 18, but we're not going to have him beyond that. So I wouldn't have minded picking up a hard-hitting uh, running back early on, but I need to just have faith. The Steelers are really good. That's one thing they're quite good at. It's identifying draft talent that they can develop and have homegrown talent. You know, they're not one of these teams that go in, all in on free agents and stuff like that. They tend to draft and develop or draft and trade as the case is sometimes but anyway i need to just have more faith right <laughs> that they know what they are doing i hope they do here comes dj chark isn't he a, is he a jaguar pretty sure he is because i think he went he and fournette of course teammates at one time i'm pretty sure they are teammates again i believe he was drafted by the jags Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe our draft class wasn't as wasn't as bad as I thought. I just I think the Terrell Edmonds is kind of what threw me. Because I do like Mason Rudolph, I do like James Washington, and and I do like Marcus Allen. So I think it's really Terrell Edmonds that threw me off the rails. Not that I dislike him. I don't dislike him. I just thought it was maybe not the place to make that choice. But as I said, if they're gonna use him for maybe inside linebacker. I feel slightly different about it. And it would appear that we have another signature hit has been replaced by rewards points. This time, 150 points. I'm putting all these in sleeves because I'm going to write on them later when we use random to award them. At least the 600 point one was a good amount of points. I, I hate when they put in the 150s because, I mean, you have to have a lot of those saved up to get anything decent. At least with the 600 points, you can just go in and get something. Marcus Mariota, that is to 35 for the Tennessee Titans. I think the 
49ers had a pretty good draft too, really. 49, I mean, of course, you know, I'm not taking in. Actually, the Browns did. I. They picked up some nice stuff on the back end. They didn't really do it the way I would have done it. Um, and they picked up a slightly different player than I probably would have picked up. I, I think I would have picked up Bradley Ward. I mean, Bradley Chubb over Denzel Ward. But as a whole, I think they had a pretty good draft. But their class, we all know, is going to be boom or bust based on Baker Mayfield. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. If Mayfield does not succeed, their draft is going to be considered a bust because it was such a, a quarterback-heavy draft and they had the pick of the crop. Justin Jackson is next out. And Justin Jackson is a charger. Always get Justin and Joshua kind of flipped around in my head. So I had to flip the page over there and check that one out. And of course, again, I do verify all that before I send it out, but Justin Jackson, I am pretty sure is a charger because that's what my notes said over there. I tried to make a few little notes based on the checklist for this product to help me remember it. Sorting's a drag, though, I will say that, because, man, <laughs> I have to, like, stop about every, seems like every other card and go, okay, where'd this guy get drafted? A little one-of-one -one printing plate coming out for the Bengals and Geno Atkins. First time Geno Atkins is a Bengal, I guess, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Or am I thinking of, uh, no, I'm thinking of Geno Smith. Geno Atkins has been a Bengal. Good grief. Lost my mind. Anyway, one of one printing plate. And um, it's going to have scratches and stuff on it. Because it was actually used to print the cards. So those don't come out all minty, mint, and pretty. They come out with lots of wear and tear on them. That's part of their charm. I think the Steelers signed like 12 or 13 undrafted free agents 10 minutes after the draft ended. <laughs> Seemed like 10 minutes after. This is numbered to 50. It's Travis Benjamin for the Chargers. I started to say San Diego. Whoops. For the LA Chargers. Of course, everybody else did the same. Everybody immediately rushes out and signs a bunch of undrafted free agents to roll them through the camp and uh, see what they've got. I've always wondered what those guys get. You know, the ones that really kind of just get the mini camp deals. How much do they get paid for that, do you think? that drafted the big Australian rugby player. Is that the Falcons? I can't remember. It might not have been the Falcons. I can't remember who it was. Somebody drafted that rugby player who is crazy big. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys saw the tape of that guy, but he's like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, never played a down of football in his life, but played rugby. And the guy is a beast. I mean, he was just basically mowing people down in that rugby footage. It was pretty awesome. Michael Gallup is next out. And do I have a note on Michael Gallup? I believe Cowboys, if I'm reading it correctly. It was the Eagles. Okay, so it was a bird team. I just got the wrong bird team. Did you see it, James, what I'm talking about? The footage of that guy? Was that not amazing? I mean, he was just steamrolling everybody. It's If they can get him to have even half that production, he's probably going to be a pretty good choice. I 
He is pretty, uh, pretty large, that fellow. Rugby's kind of one of those things where it's kind of a rough and tumble sport anyway, right? And they don't even play. I mean, it's not technically they don't tackle and stuff, but there's a lot of, a lot of hitting the ground, I think, in rugby too in various ways. To 35, Drew Brees for the Saints. Yeah, exactly, James. I mean, it was crazy. He was just carrying people along with him. I mean, it was really quite something to see. If you guys haven't seen the footage of that big rugby player, I can't remember his name, you should go look for it because it's worth looking at. That might be... if. <laughs> If they make trading cards for that guy, who knows if they will. You never know what Panini's going to do in terms of, you know, their signatures and things. But if they do, I might be inclined to try and, and get that guy. Because <laughs> I just love it. It's so awesome. Here is another Dion Kane. Once again, I believe this is going to the Colts. And that is our second Dion Kane, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, we will recap... Uh, all of our signature hits at the end of the break. I meant to flip our rookies to look at them the right way. And the Patriots, does anybody know anything about that quarterback that they, I see another points card coming, that they drafted? It was... Uh, Ederling or something like that. It was a really, uh, somebody I wasn't on my radar at all. I don't know anything about the quarterback that the Patriots took. I meant to look him up today and I forgot to do it. Got busy. So another points card comes out. Boo means another autograph hit got replaced. This one's 400 points. So we have a 600 point, a 400 point, and a 150 point uh, card. We already looked at these, didn't we? Yes, we did, I think. Yes, we did. Um, but I would rather just have the signatures and not the stupid points cards. Of course, most of you know... Many of you have done breaks with me before. You know how I hate those points cards anyway. I think that's such a rip. Just put the hits in there. Nobody wants those points cards. Well, some people do, actually. Somebody let me know one night that they did like the points cards. But most people, I think, don't. Number 235, Jonathan Stewart and the Panthers. And the part that I think is the worst about all of it, aside from the fact that you just have to constantly go on there and see if they've added anything that you want to use your points on, the other part that I find insulting, really, is that then they make you pay postage on it. Yes, they do. After you redeem the points that you already paid money to get that you should have just had to hit in your pack that you've paid for, you have to pay them again for them to ship you the card that they didn't that you choose when you redeem your points. I, I just think that is so awful. Makes me mad every time I think about it. This is numbered 220 and it's the biscuit. Mitch True Biscuit for the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of, I'm kind of thinking about, I usually only buy into the Steelers for football breaks because I keep the cards myself. I don't really sell my cards I just most of the time. Although I'm thinking about selling some somewhere along the way, but I haven't and I don't usually. But I'm seriously considering starting to do what some of you guys do which is when I buy into other breaks buy teams that aren't my team and then if I pull something good turn around and sell it because <laughs> it seems like it's fun 
This is Deshaun Hand. I believe that is the Lions. It's numbered to 35, so nice low number for Deshaun Hand and I think the Lions. And if I decide to go that route, I'm still kind of on the fence a little bit, but if I decide to do that, I think I'm going to have to buy the Ravens. And given that they're a division rival and all, it's going to be extremely hard for me to do. <laughs> so it's going to be actually pulling for the Ravens, at least in breaks. I don't know. It's going to be hard on me. Yes, I know, James. I agree. It is. Like, I just, I can't hardly do it. <laughs> I have cards that I don't, I know I don't need to keep. And some of them are duplicates or very similar in nature that I know I could sell and still have the one that I like the best. But it's just, I don't want to, kind of. But I am considering selling a few. Actually, I'm thinking about selling some of my Le'Veon Bells because I've got quite a few of his rookie cards in varying forms. And I think that I'm probably going to sell some of those because I really don't see any way we're going to have him pass this year. He's going to be gone. Well, for sure, James, it is easiest to sell the division rivals because I would no way would I want to keep those cards. <laughs> but the hard part is the, is the you know, cheering for them part. <laughs> That's the part that, that gets me. That is numbered to 50 with Zeke and the Cowboys. Of course, I know cheering for them to come out of a break is different than pulling for them to win a game. But still, you know, it's so ingrained. No, <laughs> I'm not for them. Although, truthfully, there are several teams that I kind of have to pull for a little bit anyway, including the Ravens, because I they have uh, at various points in time some of my ex-UK players on there. And that's my school. I graduated from UK University of Kentucky. And we have so few people in the pros in football that the ones we do have, you know, I want them to do well, no matter who they're playing for. So I kind of, I kind of have some little rooting interest for, for other teams in that regard. So we are coming into our fourth and final box for tonight. And of course we'll have the last part of this case on Wednesday night. Nothing new coming out Wednesday. But Friday, of course, we have uh, National Treasures Basketball. If you're into that sort of thing. And lots and lots of Bowman. I'm going to be breaking a lot of Bowman over the course of the next week to 10 days. So I would like, I want to get all the Bowman finished up before we start into Tier 1, which is about mid-May, roughly mid-May. Cedric Wilson. Do I know Cedric Wilson? Uh, according to what I have written over here, Cowboys. And, of course, again, I will verify that, double-check that before... I send it out, but I believe that that is correct. Hi, Jake. You are asking if I only sell on eBay. Uh, do you mean the breaks or do you mean individual cards? If you're talking about the breaks, yeah, I've only, I only do them on eBay right now. I've been saying forever that I want to get my website set up. And what have I been saying that a couple years now? <laughs> it's still not done. So that does not bode well for me getting that done anytime soon. But maybe one of these days. Number to 35, Patrick Peterson for the Arizona Cardinals. The new home of Josh Rosen. Whoops, my screen's trying to time out.
Yeah, breaks are only listed on eBay right now. Yes. Sometimes I'll do one directly. Um, and if I do, I, I will announce it, of course, during events like this. You know, during a live stream, I'll talk about it and offer it up for sale at the beginning and at the end of the live stream and things like that. So occasionally, I will do some direct that way. And that's typically when it's random teams and fixed price kind of stuff. I don't do it often, but every once in a while I do. don't have time to try to put together the website that's kind of the thing at the end of the day so I've always got stuff to do I've always got work and stuff to do ho oh, ho Bradley Chubb baby yeah I like it Broncos with the little Bradley Chubb hit Bradley Chubb and Von Miller Gotta be tearing it up in Denver. Um, I, yeah, I don't really do um, personal packs per se. I know what you're talking about there. There are some breakers that put together packs out of various stuff. That is not really me. I do have an inordinate amount of odds and ends hits from people that don't pay or teams that don't sell and things I open myself just for me personally and they don't come out with teams I collect. So I have a lot of stuff. But yeah, I haven't, haven't been messing with any of that sort of thing. I don't even have most of the cards sorted. I mean, I have so many cards that need to be sorted. So, so many. Oh, you know what I else I keep forgetting the list? Besides that, which I, ugh, every day I say I'm going to remember to do it, and then every day I don't get it done. Um... Somebody asked me about fantasy sports breaks and asked me about getting that in. So I got some of that and we'll have to get that scheduled to break. I don't think Jester was drafted. Yeah, he was not. So he goes into the undrafted pile. So this fantasy sports breaks, I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it. I got it, I don't know, got it in here a week or two ago. But basically, it's a certain number of hits that are guaranteed in the box. And I don't remember how many, so I'll have to, you know, that'll be in the listing. But it's a, it's a certain number of hits in there. As well as some unopened packs of cards, like a couple of packs of cards. Which m you may have additional hits in, and you may not. They're just random packs of cards. So, uh, they didn't have a lot left, the place I was buying it from. They had like a box or two left, so that's what I bought. And when I can find time to create a listing for that, we'll get those listed and see how they do. And if they do well, we'll do some more. And if they don't, oh well, no harm, no foul. That is numbered, oddly enough, to six. Yeah, not to five, but to six. And Taven, let's see if I wrote down where Taven went. Jags, Taven Bryan Jags my is uh, where I believe that goes. Oh, Jake says it is two hits and two packs. Okay. I thought the two packs was right, but I wasn't sure if it was two hits or more hits. I really couldn't remember because I haven't paid much attention to it since it got here. I just kind of set it aside. I knew I had to create a... A listing for it and I 
I didn't really do anything other than set it in a pile that says, hey, yeah, you've got to create a listing for this stuff. <laughs> about as far as I got. But somebody asked me about it, I don't remember when, a month or so ago maybe, in one of the breaks, asked me about opening it. So I tracked it down and we'll see what happens. Number 210 with Jamie Collins and the Cleveland Browns. I also ordered some, I don't know, something really, do you guys know Pacific Heads Up? Are you familiar with that company from back in the early 2000s? So somebody I buy from called me and said they had some 2002 Pacific Heads Up update, I think it is. And in that is the possibility to pull the very first ever Tom Brady patch card, which apparently sells for five or $600, something like that. So I ordered a little bit of that too. It's weird though, right? There's a bobblehead in there. So it's like a bobblehead and some packs of cards. It's kind of weird. It's not here yet, but I ordered it. Brian Cushing for the Texans. Nice little on-card auto hit for Houston Texans. So, I don't really, it sounds like, I don't know what, I don't know what to think about it, but I let him talk me into it because it sounded, uh, it sounded interesting and I didn't order a lot. I just ordered a few and then figured, much like the fantasy sports, I figure, eh, we'll open it. If we like it, fine. If we don't, fine. Oh, Jake, you're talking about the, you're talking about the fantasy sports that you got a, a one of one booklet shield jersey auto out of it. Yeah, I knew the hits were buybacks. Um, oh, I didn't know some of them were also from their personal collection. No, I did not know that part, but all right. Well, that's cool too. Um, as long as they're good, doesn't matter. And then of course I knew there were some unopened packs, which we may or may not pull anything out of. Numbered to 50 for the Titans. You typed in what was that? Which What are you asking me about, Jake? The Brian Cushing auto or something else? I'm not sure which the... There's a little bit of delay, guys, from the time that you type it in to the time that it shows up on my side so I'm not entirely sure what that what you're asking about but if you want to jump in there and clarify for me I will happily answer that oh the 2002 boxes uh, they are 2002 Pacific Heads Up Update is what technically the full name of the product is Okay, so three hits were replaced, a 600-point card, a 400-point card, and a 150-points card. So here's what we will do. I'm going to, I'll bring you along with me as I do this, but I'll copy all of the bidding positions, which will include the undrafted rookie's bidding position from the spreadsheet. Then I will paste that into random.org. Because we have 33 entries... I'm only going to hit random one single time. And whatever three teams come up first after we hit random will be the three teams that are going to take those home. So the team that comes up in the number one position will get the 600 points. The team that comes up in the number two position will get 400 points. The team that comes up in the third position will get the 150 points. And there we're just scrolling through so you can... See and verify that, in fact, uh, all of the teams were copied and pasted and plugged in there, including our undrafted rookies bidding position. And here we go. Good luck, everybody. So the Buffalo Bills with the 600 points. The New York Jets get 400 points. And undrafted rookies get 150 points. And I need to write that down. That is Bills, Jets, and undrafted rookies. All right. So, let's get that locked and loaded, and then we will recap our hits. 
I know my handwriting's terrible, but it's on a sleeve, so it's okay. You can take it off and throw it away once you get it. It's just so that I can easily sort it. So we'll first uh, take a look at our numbered cards. Uh, that is to 50. This one is to 10. That is to 6. 35, 50, 20, 35, 35, 50, 35, 20, 10, 50, 20, and 35. All right, so those are the numbered cards, our hits. Of course, these are the points we just used uh, random to award that replace three of our autograph hits. So the Bills will get 600 points, the Jets will get the 400 point card, and the undrafted rookies bidding position gets the 150 points. Brian Cushing for the Houston Texans. Jester was uh, undrafted. Bradley Chubb was the is the Broncos. Cedric, let me double check. Cedric Wilson, Cowboys. Mr. Hand here. I'm flipping through to make sure or that I'm getting all of these right. Lions. Dion Kane is the Colts. Michael Gallup. Where did I write you down, Michael Gallup? Cowboys. I know, it's dreadful. It's hard to learn all these <laughs> right after the draft. It takes me a little while. Geno Atkins printing plate, one of one for the Cincinnati Bengals. Justin Jackson is the Chargers. DJ Chark, I believe, is a Jaguar. Yes. Josh Adams. Josh, where are you? Josh Adams was undrafted. There's Dion Kane again for the Colts. Leighton Vander Esch is the Cowboys. And Mr. Hines here. I've forgotten where Mr. Hines went. The Colts. Okay. So that is what our break looks like for this evening. I will put up the shipping info again real quick and the stuff that's coming up in the days ahead. If you happen to miss that earlier or you're watching the the uh, uploaded recorded version and you didn't you scroll to the end we'll give you a chance to look at all that info as well so once again anticipated a Friday shipping date for um, a score that we just opened if I can get it to you sooner I definitely will and it's possible it could slide a day later if I have something go wrong but Friday's a pretty reasonable guess I think and then here's a quick little buzz through what's coming up in the days ahead our case tomorrow is Bowman. Our case on Wednesday is Score. Case on Thursday is Bowman. On Friday, the case is Prime Signatures Football and National Treasures Basketball. And on Saturday, the case is Bowman. And of course, again, there's always one box breaks and memorabilia and other stuff mixed in. So that's it for me tonight. Thank you once again to everybody who participated. I appreciate it. I hope I'll see you again soon. In the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.